I'd like to think Shakespeare was a Newfoundlander. He does spend a lot of time on the sea in a number of his plays. And on the other hand, besides Falstaff, there's not a lot about beer. But he has this memorable maritime observation about when to get into politics. There's a tide in the affairs of men which taken at the flood, etc. Well, he doesn't offer similar sea-inspired wisdom about when to leave. That he leaves for politicians, Newfoundlanders or otherwise, to figure out for themselves. Kathy Dunderdale, the first ever female premier of Newfoundland since we've had premiers from Joey Smallwood on, was more or less than following her own script when somewhat surprisingly yesterday she announced she was stepping down. There's as much judgment involved in knowing when to go as knowing when to start taken at the flood. I think there's a great sanity on display in leaders who, unbesieged by scandal, the Senate, or in no extraordinary personal turbulence, Mr. Ford, have the good sense or ability to step aside. Politics is as obsessive in Newfoundland as it is anywhere, and the craving to get in, to grab high office, to be the big person on the scene is as strong in the fog as it is where the sun shines. Smallwood, the icon of our premiers, even after more than 20 years, he was almost welded to the premier's chair. It took that thundercloud John Crosby and a nearly two-year combat to shake Joey from the premiership. And even then, he lingered, diminished, and clouded his stature. In Kathy Dunderdale's case, she was in a hard spot from the beginning. Newfoundland's is a wild, high-energy politics, and she was following in the footsteps of someone who many Newfoundlanders saw as more than a premier, almost a hero politician, Danny Williams. His dominance of the scene, his manner, were a frame almost impossible to fill. And then, too, Newfoundland's weather, a curse more dark even than our politics, that was against her. A heavy recent storm, rolling blackouts and a province-wide failure hit her at a time when her support was low, polls were feeble, and the opposition liberals on the rise, people in her own party even, starting to question her. I don't think she carried much real blame for the storm, but it colored the moment. Dunderdale's leaving can be seen as nothing more than a sane response to political difficulties. And don't underestimate the value and rarity of sanity in politics. It has about it, however, another quality. It demonstrates she wasn't absorbed by politics. It illustrates a half paradox, that only those who don't really need to be politicians should seek to be in it. Sometimes there's more smarts in leaving than in taking up the game. Tide or no tide, Willie. For The National, I'm Rex Murphy.